morning friends it's heather at push poppy farm it is a very chilly morning um, i'm in the greenhouse we are got a little bit of sunshine here in between these massive downpours uh, it's been raining hard for three days so um, i'm here in the greenhouse to start seeds i am a week behind starting week eight seeds uh, and so i have week eight week nine and since the coming week is week 10 I got those out here as well, so I'll go over what I'm going to start. But there's been some drama in the greenhouse, namely something eating my seedlings. And I'm pretty positive that it's rodents because the soil blocks are flattened and trampled. And you don't usually get that with anything but a vertebrate animal. And about the only thing that could fit in here or dig under. And I do see evidence of something digging underneath the greenhouse, the gravel on the edge, and then coming up under. Uh, would be a rodent of some type. So um, I have set traps. I have snap traps set everywhere in here. <laughs> and none of them are being sprung. In fact, uh, the night before last, one something ate the peanut butter off of a trap and never even triggered the trap. So these are very wily creatures. <laughs> uh, but they have done some major damage. So I want to go over with you what's going on in here right now. And then uh, talk about what I'm starting. Um, and I'm just, I'm anxious because, like I said, I feel like no place is safe. Uh, so some of this stuff is going to go out in the front garden soon because it'll actually be safer out there since I don't currently have any major pests going on out there. Um, but a lot of this stuff cannot go in the ground anytime soon. And it's also not ready to be bumped up. So I'll show you what I've got right now. Okay, here on the bench this is actually it's on a big giant heating mat um, and they've already germinated but I still have them on the heat mat because these are peppers so um, some spotty germination you can see there's a couple cells that just didn't germinate in some of these now this white stuff here is actually I put down um, sluggo which is a slug uh, bait that kills them uh, because I did see some snail and slug trails in here. So I did put sluggo down and that turns when it gets white and I keep these under a dome at night to keep things from eating them, <laughs> the, the mice. Um, it turned into this like furry fuzz stuff, which you'll see on some of the other seedlings. So I scraped off as much as possible. These are doing fine. Um, but, you know, they have a ways to go and my greenhouse is not heated. So the coldest it's been in here is 38 degrees. And you can imagine tomatoes and peppers really aren't excited to be actively growing in that kind of temperature. So I keep them on this seedling heat mat. They get covered at night um, by plastic dome covers and uh, that hopefully will keep them growing. I mean, they are growing, but very slowly. And that's okay because it's only March 2nd. Um, over here is calendula. I've already put some of this um, in the front garden. I'm gonna add more to the farm just don't have a place set up for that yet. These are all, so there's cress and ageratum and some other stuff that, and marigolds that survived from a tray that was mostly eaten by rodents. So they're just kind of collected there in that tray. They're all going out to the farm. Um, here's some of the marigolds. This whole thing was full. All 20 cells were full of marigolds here and they've been munched off, you can see, eaten. This is uh, rudbeckia and a lot of those were eaten as well, so yeah pretty frustrating. Now over here on the shelves, um, this is where the most damage happens. And this is where I have most of the traps set. I've got them set um, in the back along the wall where the pathways would be. I've got them under here. I've got them on the, on the shelves themselves. I've even got an electronic trap back there. Nothing's been tripped. Again, I uncover all these every morning and I cover them back up at night. So this is a tray of sunflower seeds and you can see the damage, right? So all of them, most of them were bitten off. And the other reason I know it's rodents is they were, they dug down into the cells to get at the seeds of the ones that hadn't germinated yet. So you've got these new ones here because what I did was about a week or so ago, I came through and in every cell that had been eaten, I put a new seed. <laughs> Figured why waste the tray? So I've got two trays just like this. Um, half of them are eaten and the others are re-germinating. So these are gonna go out in the field pretty soon. But if I put them out there right now, 
they would just get decimated. They're just not big enough or strong enough. So at night they get covered uh, with a seed tray and so far that's been helping. Um, this is eucalyptus. Nobody seems to mind that too much. That's bad. You always get bad germination on eucalyptus or, or at least I do. So that couple of plants there, that's going to be enough. Um, this is cyanoglossum that I did not finish transplanting out of the farm because I didn't have space for it. So it's going to go here in my home garden. Tomatoes here. These guys are doing pretty good. Um, they're starting to get true leaves. I also cover these at night. Um, but so far, so good on these. This is Rudbeckia. Now this whole tray did look almost like this back block here, but you could see a lot of them have been eaten. This whole area got trampled. So again, that's how I know it's uh, rodents. This tray, so far so good. We've got Eryngium, um, and then these are all Dianthus, different varieties here. And then we've got Cosmos and um, yeah, Cosmos. All right. So, so far, so good on those. <laughs> I'm trying to stay on top of everything and make sure everything gets covered at night. Now, this is a bummer. So this is all arugula. Looks beautiful. It's very peppery. So a lot of pests don't tend to eat them. Um, these are platycodon. They're going to take a while to germinate. Not too worried about that. Uh, salvia. And then this is, uh, auric, uh, mountain mint, which the rodents absolutely love. They destroyed a tray of that for me last year, so I need to replant. And Nicotiana. And then back here was all spinach, and it's all gone. One night. It was beautiful. It looked just like this. Like, here's some left that survived. Ah, I was so mad. Okay, up here is mostly gomfrina. Uh, and you could see the, um, the pellets for the slugs. They just get fuzzy when they get wet. And so that's what those are in there, but the plants are doing okay. So this, this tray is all right. I guess Gomprina is not a very big draw. Um, and then here we've got borage, which I love. And, I'm, and so far nothing has messed with those. And sweet alyssum, which has gotten eaten in places and the hyssops and coreopsis. So yeah, and then also the, I've been scraping off as many slug pellets as I can because they block the germination in some places, but I wanted to try to make sure that slugs didn't eat everything too. So that's what we've got going in the greenhouse right now. Um, some of this after the major rains can go out. Like I can get, I can plant the arugula and the little bit of spinach that survived. Um, and some of these flowers, as soon as I prepare the beds at the farm, can go out as well. So I'll have more space. But the tomatoes and the peppers are going to be in here for a long time. They will get bumped up to four inch pots at some point. Um, and these tomatoes here are getting fairly close to that time where I would bump them up. But we'll give them a little bit more time. Mostly because I don't have the, the space yet to bump them up because they'll take up a lot more space. Okay, so seeds for today. Got a lot of them, and I'm anxious about some of these in particular. So for flowers, um, I, and I grouped these so that I could have specific trays of just things. So here's the sunflower, uh, sunflowers I need to start. Um, these are basil. Um, I use these dark opal, cinnamon, and lemon basil as fillers for bouquets and dill as well. So those are going to go in a tray. I don't need thousands of these. So one tray will be fine. Um, this, this, uh, packet here, this is all flowers that are for like the front garden or the, uh, pollinator beds at the farm, which I haven't built yet. This is Agastache Apache sunset. There's a fragrant delight mix. These are so great. Once you got them in the ground, they're perennial um, in zones seven through 10, and they just are amazing. They smell really good. They make great uh, filler and bouquets. And then pink dandelion and a white dandelion. These are so sweet. They're very uh, low spreading. In other words, they don't take over like a regular dandelion does. Then I've got columbine, um, aquilegia pink petticoat, Macana Giants, and then some marigolds. These are small, like a pot marigold. Um, I use these in the front garden and also just for 
decoration because they're pretty. And then hollyhocks. Um, I finally, uh, after two years, the hollyhock that I planted a couple years ago finally came up last year and it was beautiful black watchman. So I want to add more um, to the garden, the cottage garden this year. All right, so that's a separate tray. And then this tray here is all zinnias with the exception of this marjoram, which is going to go over here. So I have the new, a uh, couple of new zinnias from Florette. These are the Florette Originals. This one's Victorian Wedding and Precious Metals. And then we've got Queen Lime Red, Oklahoma White, Oklahoma Salmon, Zinderella Peach. I have two of those. Oklahoma Mix, Cupcake Mix, and that's for the zinnias. So these will definitely all go in one tray. And then I have another tray I need to start. This is also flowers. Um, this wild marjoram, actually, I'm going to put up here because it's going to be a uh, filler. Oh, it's starting to rain again. Okay, so dahlias. We've got shooting stars, petite florette. And the interesting thing about dahlias from seed, first of all, they germinate great. They grow really fast. It's wonderful. You just never know what you're going to get with zinnias. I mean, with uh, dahlias from seed because they cross-pollinate super easily. So this is a fun um, now these have been bred in the fly isolation tents. So pretty much what you see on this picture is what you're going to get. But if you then take these, um, take seeds from these plants, if you've like planted them out where they can crossbreed with other, uh, dahlias, if you then take seeds from the plants that you plant, you won't know what you're going to get, but that's okay. That's kind of the fun. Or you can just save the tubers from these and you will get the same ones next year. So I like to start dahlias from seed and also dahlias from tubers, which is another to-do list this week. Um, and then we've got marigolds because most of mine got eaten. So I'm definitely going to be starting more of those. This is uh, Kilimanjaro white. Here's another version of it. Uh, Nacento lime green and white swan. So now I'm going to move on to the, um, the veggies and the herbs. Um, this is the time of year where I start all the vegetables and herbs, well, with the exception of the peppers and the tomatoes, but uh, the herbs and some of the uh, squashes and stuff for my seedling sale, as well as for my personal garden. So there's a lot in here. Um, a lot, a lot. <laughs> so we've got coriander. I've got two varieties here, um, Mexican, or I'm sorry, Moroccan. And then this one is called long standing. So it's really slow to bolt, which is important in places uh, in higher zones because then it gets hot and, and cilantro is like, nope, done. And they send up a, a flower spike and then that's it. So I like to plant both varieties. Um, and then I have this birdhouse gourd, which is new to me this year. Um, Hudson Valley Seed Company. I thought it would be really fun to grow some of these. I want to put some of these, if it works out, I want to have a couple of birdhouse gourds in my home garden, but also out at the farm. I really would like to erect some bird houses, really tall ones out at the farm, as well as some owl houses and some bat houses on the perimeter. I would love, love, love to do that because I want to bring those guys in. Um, so I'm going to start those. Uh, catnip. I always have to have catnip for my kitty. Uh, bouquet dill, which I'm already starting in the, uh, the flower session, but this can also uh, be eaten. So dill. And then I have a whole bunch of basils here. Uh, we've got Genovese, Tulsi, holy basil. I, I love Tulsi tea. If you've never had it, give it a try. Uh, another Genovese and then another Tulsi. Okay. Sages. Looks like I only have one sage right now. And also it's in the wrong spot. So we may come across another one later. Okay. So okra. This is my first year growing it. I love okra and I want to start doing some more Creole cooking. So I'm going to be starting some okra. And then we have a couple Asian greens here. Um, this is just a hybrid Asian leafy green from Johnny's. Um, more rainbow chard. Can't have enough chard. We eat so much chard. So good. We saute it. I, I will cut the leaves off, leaving the, the, the rib, the stem. Put, set the leaves aside, chop the stem into tiny pieces, saute that with um, in some olive oil with a little bit of lemon juice, 
and whatever spices you want. Sometimes we put hot pepper in there, whatever. Uh, and then when that's mostly softened, you add the leaves and just let them wilt. So good. Okay. Uh, starting some garlic chives and some fine leaf regular chives. Now, most of these herbs will go in my herb tower um, green stock, but I'm also starting them for my uh, my customers who've already purchased, pre-purchased the vegetable garden in a box because then they can have vegetables and herbs in their garden. More red Russian kale, more dazzling blue kale. And I say more because I've already started these already. Lemon balm, oh, one of my favorites. Now this is supposed to be perennial in zones four through nine, but mine died this year. Um, I probably just because the soil got so not, not so nice in that green stock, I think lemon balm, it's a big plant. I think I'm going to put some out at the farm as well. I think it just needs more space than what's in the green stock. The only thing is because it's in the mint family, uh, it does want to take over. So I was kind of hoping to uh, contain it in the <laughs> green stock, but we'll see. Maybe it just gets its own big pot. Uh, and then I have some broadleaf sage here to start as well. Uh, a couple of lettuces. Oh, lots of lettuces. Wow, lots of lettuces. Okay, so we've got little gem. These are so yummy. Um, some Merlot, which is already growing out in the garden, but I'll start these for my customers. Uh, Komatsuna, which is a really yummy Japanese green. Um, a romaine lettuce called Coastal Star. This one's great. It is slow to bolt, which is really nice in my environment, in my climate. Uh, May Queen, which did not germinate for me last time, so I'm going to do it again. And then Landis Winter. This one's a really cold hardy variety. So I'm kind of pushing the edge here, um, but I think I can get a quick crop out of it. Um, I already have lots of onions up front, but I'm going to start some bunching onions. This is White Lisbon. And then, oh, here's the sages. So we just have regular culinary sage and an Italian aromatic sage. Sorrel. If you've never tried sorrel, uh, totally give it a try. This is um, a uh, native plant, an herb from Europe, Asia, and Africa. It's got this like lemony flavor to it. It's so, so good. I like it fresh in a salad. Some people saute it, but it's so good. Um, more time. I have my time and my green stock is totally fine. It survived the winter. It always does. But I like to give these to um, customers in their boxes. And then... Uh, let's see, moving on. Now these are the seeds that I'm most nervous about planting and I'll tell you why. So this is the cucumbers, this is all the cucurbits, cucumbers and squashes, winter and summer. Um, I pretty much always start these in six packs. You can direct sow them. And in fact, I'm going to do both this year and that's to cover my bases. Uh, rodents especially love to eat these seeds. So the ones I'm going to start here in six packs in the greenhouse, I'm literally going to wrap the entire tray tightly with floating row cover, which is, um, you know, frost cover that you can see through. It gets light and air and everything through there. But while they're germinating, this will keep the rodents from digging them out of the soil and eating them, which is what they do, uh, just like they did with my sunflower seeds. So I really want to avoid that. Um, and so I'm going to start a bunch in trays, six packs in here, but then I'm also going to direct sow some squashes out front in the garden already because I don't have any rodent problems out there currently. And this way, if those germinate and they do great, fine. I just have extra seedlings um, if these guys survive in the greenhouse, but I want to cover my bases because the cucurbit family is my very favorite. I love cucumbers. I love summer and winter squash, winter squash especially. So I've got a bunch of really fun varieties and I want to give these to my customers as well in their veggie boxes. So here's what we're doing. Okay. Cucumbers, uh, bit alpha. I think that's how you pronounce it. I tried growing these last year. I had a terrible cucumber year last year. So, uh, I'm moving them to a totally different location in the garden. I'm hoping they'll do better. Uh, this is a dragon's egg cucumber. This one's new to me. China Jade looks like it's going to be pretty prickly, but I'm still looking forward to it. Uh, I have a hybrid pickling cucumber called Max Pack. Um, and then, of course, the I have also one called QWERTY. The reason I'm not showing you is because it's from Johnny's and there's no picture. Uh, and then Market More, classic snacking cucumber. Um, I have P 
pickling cucumbers because I definitely want to make pickles. Uh, and then slicing cucumber. This one's called Manny's. Then we're moving into melons. Now I have some watermelons, uh, which I, I'm not starting yet. Apparently they need needed a later start date, but these are two uh, kind of cantaloupe type melons. So this one's called Hearts of Gold. And then I have one called the Banana Melon. Never grown this before. So I'm looking forward to that. These, these are all start indoors two to three weeks before last frost date. So we're in the, we're in the time frame. Pumpkins, a Cinderella pumpkin. God, I love pumpkins. I love to eat them. I love to look at them. I have very little success in growing them every year. I keep trying. And you would think in my area in California, it's like one of the pumpkin places in the world where people grow a lot of them. For some reason I fail every time. So I'm going to keep, keep trying. This is the Howden, Howden pumpkin. It's like your quintessential carving Halloween pumpkin. Now squashes. Um, and most of the squashes that I'm going to start, most of like the winter ones are in the house, the, the seed packets, because I'm going to start them in the garden direct. So, but in the, in the greenhouse, we're going to do um, the zucchini long white of Palermo. This thing is so prolific, like most zucchinis, but wonderful. And I actually got a couple of absolute monsters out of it last year that even at a huge size were actually very tender. Um, I ended up giving most of that to my chickens who loved it, but still. Uh, this one's new to me. I'm going to try to climb it up a trellis. This one's zucchini rompicante. Now here's one I'm excited about. I tried growing this last year and had no success, but like I said, last year's vegetable garden was kind of a fail all the way around. Seminole squash. It's a wild squash of Florida, which is where I grew up. Uh, honey nut. I love honey nut. Now I like butternut squash a lot, but honey nut squash is, is literally my favorite. It's our favorite, the family's. What I find about honey nut is that you get a lot of the same flavor, only it's sweeter and there's less water content in it. So when I make butternut squash soup or honey nut squash soup, what I do is I cut the squashes in half. Um, I put them, I put a little bit of coconut oil on, on the sides facing upwards, uh, the inside facing up a little bit of salt. And I roast them in the oven at 400 degrees until they're done until they're fork tender. Then I scoop them out and put them in the soup pot and make it from there. And that gives it a roasted flavor, which is really good. And it's so nice with these honey nut because they don't have so much water content, which makes them um, just a lot better in the soup. I, I don't know, just richer, meatier. They're more of a texture of a sweet potato. So I really, really like them. Uh, and this one's similar. This one's called Honey Boat. And then I have a sweet nut acorn. Now, like I said, I have a lot more squashes, winter squashes, but I'm going to direct sow those um, after the rains this coming week. Um, little mounds out there in the garden. They've already been mapped in seed time where I'm going to put them. All right. So that's a lot of seeds to start. I probably won't get them all done today because I have um, some things I have to do this afternoon, but I want to get a start on them. I can always come back tomorrow. One thing I will not do is leave these seed packets out here overnight because those little gremlins will eat them right out of the packet. Well, it didn't get very far. I mean, I sowed a lot of seeds, but I still have a long ways to go. Uh, however, I have an appointment, uh, so I need to leave. I need to go shower, eat and shower, and then leave. Um, and then when I come back, it'll be dark or getting dark, at which point in time I'll have to cover everything again and, uh, you know, come back out in the morning and try to start the rest of these seeds. But I did get through the flowers. So uh, up here we have the marigolds, um, dill, marjoram, and lemon, uh, lemon basil. And then these are all the basils. So nothing has germinated. On, they're on a heat mat. Nothing has germinated yet. So I don't think there's going to be an issue, but I am going to cover this with a tray just to make sure. I'm also going to cover this. This is all my, my um, zinnias, and I definitely don't want anything walking around on here crushing these blocks. So I'll cover that tray too. And then down here we have uh, dahlias, uh, the two varieties, and I've separated them so that they're easy. Uh, Agastache, the dandelions, um, aquilegia or columbine, and um, marigolds. So I'll also cover those. Um, some of them I can go on and cover with floating row cover, the ones that are in trays, but the other ones 
don't have enough height. So I'll probably just turn what I've been doing is using these and just turning them upside down over the trays and um, that that way they get still get a little bit of light and they definitely get air. Um, and I have a few extras of those right now. So, okay, that's gonna be it for me today, you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna tackle this big box of all the herbs and squashes and cucumbers and all that. Um, and hopefully get those set up in the six packs, which I've got down here. Uh, they're kind of dirty, but doesn't really matter. They're just gonna get soil and then we'll get them off to the races. Thanks again for hanging out with me. I hope you guys have a wonderful time in your garden and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.